Today in Arts for Life's virtual studio, we're going to be talking a little bit about the history of bluegrass music, um, specifically its origins in Africa and in Europe, and the way that it has been blended in the southeastern and Appalachian regions of the U.S. into something uniquely American. <laughs> teacher in Arts for Life's Asheville chapter at Mission Children's Hospital. I just want to welcome you to our virtual studio where we believe that art is for everyone. Today I'm just going to be talking a little bit about the origins um, and beautiful melting pot history of bluegrass music. I want to start today by just playing you a little bit of a song by the very first bluegrass band, uh, Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys. So I'm just going to Play a little chunk of a tune for you here. Well, the people would come from far and away, they danced all night to the break of day. When they called her a holler, yo, she know, you knew Uncle Finn was ready to go. That's a little bit from Bill Monroe, known as the father of bluegrass music, and the Bluegrass Boys. Um, now, that probably sounds pretty old-fashioned to you. That recording is from a television show in 1965, um, and at that point, the Bluegrass Boys had been around for about 20 years already. Um, they started in the 1940s. But the roots of bluegrass go way further back than that, over 300 years. Um, you heard several instruments there in that clip, um, sort of the traditional format of a bluegrass band. You heard four people singing, a fiddle, a guitar, a bass, like a big double bass. Behind me you can see my cello, that's smaller than a double bass. Um, and then a mandolin and a banjo. Um, and the banjo is really the key here to our conversation today. The banjo is an instrument that most people think of as purely American. I have one here. This is a modern bluegrass banjo. It's a Deering banjo. I wish I could play it for you, but that is not my specialty. Um, I did want to just show it to you. Um, you'll be hearing some better banjo players <laughs> coming up in some of the clips I'm going to play for you. The banjo has um, an amazing history of its own. It begins as um, traditional folk lute instruments from Western Africa. Um, a lute is also the um, ancestor of the guitar, so really any instrument where you have strings strung across a hollow body, you're talking about a lute instrument. Um, and so in the um, Senegambian region of West Africa, uh, you find amazing musical traditions that include these lute instruments that are the predecessors of the banjo. And when African people were captured and enslaved and brought to the United States, even before the United States existed, back in the early 1600s, I think 1619 was the first year that African captives were kidnapped and brought to this land that would later become the United States. From that point on, you have people coming to this um, to this area of the world, bringing memories and traditions with them of their own traditional instruments and their own musics, their own rhythms, um, and those cultural roots being transported across the ocean inevitably ended up mixing with the cultural roots of the white people that were in the same regions of the United States. Um, and the white people that were in those regions largely came from Scotland, Ireland, and England, um, especially in the Appalachian Mountains and in the southeastern U.S. You have a lot of people with what we call Scots-Irish history. So the next clip I want to play for you is actually an Irish fiddle tune. Um, this one is played by a fiddler named Katie Adelson. 
It's called the Swallowtail Jig. And so since we're talking about um, the European ancestors of bluegrass music, I want to play you just a little bit of this beautiful Irish fiddle tune here. The Swallowtail Jig, as played by Katie Adelson. Um, jigs and reels are some of the traditional forms of Irish and Scottish, or we could say Celtic fiddle music, um, and Celtic music in general. And what you may have noticed there is a really familiar violin or fiddle sound, right? That is clearly part of bluegrass music, um, and also a very insistent steady, straight beat, just a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four kind of beat. Um, and I'll play just another tiny bit of that so you can hear what I mean. With the one, two, three, four. <laughs> Very insistent. I love that beat. It's so driving and it has so much energy to it. And I want you to compare that with this clip of Sana Indaya, excuse me, Sana Indaya, um, a Senegalese master of uh, an instrument that is one of the predecessors of the banjo, one of the ancestors of the banjo, called the akanting, um, a Senegambian traditional instrument, again, a folk lute. Um, so here is Sana Daya playing a song called Children. tiny bit more about the Akanti. It's a traditional instrument, as I said, of the Jola people. Um, it's found in Senegal, Gambia, and Guinea-Bissau in West Africa. And it's played in what's called a claw hammer style, um, which is a right hand technique, which is like the picking hand on the banjo or on the Akanti. Um, and claw hammer is a word you may recognize if you're familiar with um, bluegrass music because it's also the style predominantly that bluegrass musicians play banjo with. Um, so that same right hand style, the plucking style and the rhythms of that plucking style come through hundreds of years and thousands of miles across the ocean in our bluegrass music here in the US today. So that's one way that we can see the African roots of bluegrass music and then you may remember from our first clip with the Bluegrass Boys, some clear lines between the fiddle and the overall rhythm that you heard there as well with that fiddle tune that we heard a few minutes ago. Um, I wanted to also just play you a little clip by Rhiannon Giddens, who is a modern artist um, who plays a traditional gourd banjo. So it is made from a squash. A gourd is a squash. Um, and so if you can imagine, if you cut a big round squash in half and hollow it out, take all the flesh and the seeds out and let it dry in the sun, you have the back of an instrument. And then you stretch um, 
basically a drum head or an animal skin over top of the the open side of the half gourd and then you put a, a neck on it just like the neck on this banjo right so this part here would be like the animal skin or the drum head this back part would be the sort of modern equivalent of that gourd and then a neck is attached and strings are strung on it and this instrument that Rihanna Giddens is playing in this clip doesn't have these lines across the neck that are called frets. It's a fretless instrument, um, which is a more traditional style, or an older style of instrument. So this is, um, I thought this clip would be great to use because she's playing a song called Briggs, Corn, Shuck, and Jig. And as I mentioned earlier, jigs and reels are just two examples of um, traditional Irish and Scottish uh, music forms. So here we have this very traditional African instrument playing a traditional Irish style tune. So here we go. We'll listen to Rhiannon Giddens. <laughs> too that Rhiannon Giddens um, was a member of the Carolina Chocolate Drops which is um, a band that plays old-time music and bluegrass music among other things um, and it's all African-American players and singers in that band um, and Don Flemons was also a member of that band he's an amazing banjo player as well um, so those are definitely some musicians to check out if you're interested in the modern revival of African Americans playing and reclaiming this traditionally, this music that is rooted in their um, ancestors' African traditions. So bluegrass music in the U.S. absolutely has a connotation, I think, of being white people music. I think we see a lot of, um, in the history of the bluegrass, community and of bluegrass music in society you see a lot of racial division there and not a lot of inclusion of black artists but um, in modern times nowadays it's really exciting to see over the last couple of decades maybe even just the last 15 years or so um, a revival of popular black players uh, reclaiming this music and, and making it once again their own so that's something to look out for if you want to dive deeper into this topic and look further um, and finally i wanted to play you a clip from a video called from africa to appalachia um, this is the virginia folk life program put this together and it's a wonderful sort of mix of all the things we've been talking about um, this video features a uh, griot from Mali. Uh, Mali is a country in West Africa and a griot, simply put, this is probably not the most comprehensive definition, but a griot is a storyteller, a person who preserves their culture within themselves. It's like a person who is a library, a person who is um, a keeper of stories and of culture for their people and their community. So um, this Malian Grio and Ngoni player is named Sheikh Hamala Debate. Um, he's one of the instrumentalists you'll be hearing in this video. Ngoni is another version of that traditional African folk lute. It looks a little more like a harp to me. Um, and it's another amazing instrument to check out. It's spelled N-G-O-N-I if you want to look into that. Um, and so the other players in this video are bluegrass banjoist Sammy Sheeler and mandolin player Danny Nicely. Um, so this is from, this clip is from a jam. It's like an improvised jam. I'm just going to play you 
a little less than a minute of it. Um, and they're all kind of sitting around in a living room playing together. And in this, I think you'll hear a combination of those um, European influences, those African influences, and then also modern bluegrass and modern African mixing of musics together. I think it's really lovely. <laughs> to Appalachia, which I highly recommend. There's lots of great stuff going on there, great music and interviews and, and interesting history there too. So that is a wrap for today. Um, thank you so much for spending some time with me learning a little bit about the African and European origins that are all mixed up in the delicious stew that we call bluegrass music today. Um, I hope that you'll if you're interested look a little further into it and learn more about it from people who are much more learned uh, than I am about bluegrass music. But this is something that I have just learned about myself in the last few years and it's been super fascinating to me. So I thought I'd share it with you today. Thank you again for spending some time with me here in the virtual studio at Arts for Life where we believe that art is for everyone. Um, I hope that if you're making some music today, maybe you'll post a video and tag us at Arts for Life NC. Um, I look forward to seeing what you've been working on and uh, thank you so much. Have a great day.